states of emergency across the American Southeast as Hurricane Helene roared ashore on Thursday night. When we produced this show yesterday, it was classified as a category three storm. That's considered a major hurricane with lasting wind speeds of between 111 and 129 miles per hour. The ability to cause significant roof and property damage and the likelihood of knocking out electricity and running water to affected areas. However, some forecasters said conditions were right for Helene to become a category four hurricane. With winds between 130 and 156 miles per hour, the ability to destroy some exterior walls and knock out power supplies for weeks or months. Flooding's expected in the region with several inches of rain in the forecast. Florida's Big Bend area, where the northwest part of the peninsula curves around the Gulf of Mexico, was directly in the path of Helene's expected landfall at around 10 p.m. Thursday. Warm ocean waters are fuel for hurricanes, causing them to strengthen. They lose that strength once they're over land. But Helene was so powerful and expected to bring so much wind and rain that Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia all declared states of emergency, in addition to Florida, which will speed up assistance to those affected by the storm. I'm Carl Azus for the world from A to Z. One immediate life-threatening danger as a hurricane makes landfall is its storm surge. It's been characterized as a wall of water that washes inland, but NOAA.gov describes storm surge as more of a rise in water levels over what they'd normally be at the time of a storm's arrival. These higher levels are literally blown ashore by wind. They're the deadliest part of a tropical cyclone, and meteorologists were predicting the surge from Helene could bring waters as much as 20 feet higher than they'd typically be in some places. All along the coast Thursday, Floridians were doing what they could to protect their homes and businesses. You're talking about 120, 125 mile an hour, potentially in Tallahassee, certainly on the coast as that makes landfall. Those are not numbers that, that we've seen in recent years. Well, <laughs> we've got to get prepared for the storm. Mandatory evacuations issued for thousands of residents, nearly the entire state under alert. You know, but it's best to be prepared for the unknown because if you're prepared, you, you can manage it better and the crisis is much, much better. At this sandbag location, all hands on deck. In this time of emergency, those serving time in Pasco County's correctional system. Hi ma'am, you're all set, okay? Now serving others. Helping by today with sandbags and really focusing on the residents of the community that are elderly or infirmed or you know need some of assistance. A couple years ago, I had to do it myself and I have a bad back, so it wasn't easy. So yes, I'm very thankful. Before the invention of the electric telegraph in the 1800s, there wasn't a practical warning system for hurricanes. People just couldn't communicate fast enough to give notice. But by the end of the 19th century, some islands that had been hit were able to warn other places in a storm's path that it was coming, and by the early 20th century, ships could use radio to alert others about dangerous conditions. Modern tech has helped forecasters identify Helene, track its progress, and predict its path all week. And that, along with advanced rescue equipment, are additional tools that save lives. On this date in world history. September 27th was significant for this 11th century dude named William. He led his army to sail from France to England on this date in 1066, and William, who was the Duke of Normandy, won the Battle of Hastings in October, was crowned King of England on Christmas Day, and ultimately became known as William the Conqueror. A French philologist, a language expert, announced he'd deciphered the Rosetta Stone on this date in 1822. The rock was from ancient Egypt. The expert was Jean-Francois Champollion, and by deciphering it, scholars were able to understand hieroglyphic writing and therefore much more about ancient Egypt. And let's hop in the tin lizzy, old sport! The first Ford Model T was assembled on this date in 1908. It wasn't the first car, but it was the first one that was considered affordable, thanks in large part to Henry Ford's new production techniques that made manufacturing faster, more efficient, and led to the assembly line. Ah, we're doing 
What type of butterfly is believed to have gone extinct in the 20th century? Red Admiral, California Sister, Zebra Longwing, Xerxes Blue. It's been decades since coastal California saw the light hue of Xerxes Blue. These beautiful dunes were once the habitat of the beautiful blue Xerxes butterfly, but the species went extinct about 80 years ago, caused by human development in the area. These are the Xerxes blue butterflies from our collection. Their native habitat was Presidio, a site on the San Francisco Peninsula. Today it's a national park, but it was formerly a U.S. Army post. More than 50 acres of natural dune habitat have been restored in the last few years. Butterflies help revive ecosystems, both as pollinators and members of the food chain. So researchers were on the hunt for a species to stand in for the long gone Xerxes. Looking at our collections here, and we're able to use modern technology, ge genome sequencing, to go back and extract genomes from these extinct butterflies that are over 100, 150 years old. A genome is a complete set of DNA in a living organism, containing all the genetic information to live and grow. We can look at those in the genomic side and say, what might be a good butterfly that we could bring back to the Presidio to repopulate what used to be the Xerxes habitat? Turns out the silvery blue butterfly was a good fit and living only about 100 miles south in Monterey County. We found a thriving population that was totally capable of donating a few individuals to establish a new population. So with the help of a few drops of some enticing fruit punch flavored Gatorade, silvery blue butterflies were rounded up, marked for future identification, and transported to Presidio. The blue beauties were then released, temporary netting set up to prevent them from flying away so they could acclimate to their new home. The reintroduction project was the group effort of California Academy of Sciences and Presidio Trust. Both plan to continue tracking the butterfly's movements using high-resolution photographs to identify their markings. The Golden State of California is our first stop in this Friday's World of Viewers. Medea Creek Middle School is in the community of Oak Park. It's also where the Panthers are on the prowl in Miss Lavigna's or Lavinia's class. Great to have y'all watching. We're flying over to the Lone Star State of Texas to soar with the Red Hawks. Coach Bolts or Bolts class is with us from Frisco. Liberty High School is here and amazing. And from the borough of Northampton, Pennsylvania, a warm welcome to Mr. Becker's class. We see you concrete kids at Northampton Area Middle School. Where in the world? This is a European nation that borders the Baltic Sea. Nazi Germany's invasion of it started World War II. Its capital is Warsaw. This is Poland, a republic of more than 38 million people. It's time to play Name That Deer. This is a pudu, the smallest deer in the world. It's native to South America and only grows to be about a foot and a half tall. It's also an endangered species, which is why the recent birth of a female pudu at a Polish zoo is making news. The Warsaw Zoo doesn't have a name for her yet, so it's asking fans to make suggestions on Facebook through the weekend. It's too bad they want the name to start with P because here's some that don't. Dearest, Deerana, Dear Laney, Deerathy, Deersony, Deersey, Dear Loris, Dear Nutella, Dear Lean, Dear Coda, Dear Monique, Dear Fni, Adira, Nadira, Adir Laid, Gwenadir, and maybe Dear Abby. Because when it comes to deer names, it's easy to find something adirable. I'm Carl Azus for the world from A to Z, and you are near and dear to me. Please have a wonderful weekend ahead. Fridays are awesome.